hello and welcome to this week's episode entitled why aren't clocks decimal if you enjoyed this episode please click like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and why not share it with your friends okay let's go when i was at secondary school the british government decimalized the currency this was the start of an incredibly expensive reform of all britain's weights and measures and it took 20 years to complete and made a huge difference to everyone's life. It was done as part of Britain's membership of first the European Economic Community and then the European Union. The cost was massive. In fact, it's very difficult to find out how much things really cost. The modern system has 100 pennies to the pound, but the old system had 12 pennies to a shilling and 20 shillings to a pound in a total of 240 pennies to the pound the other measurement systems like weights liquids or terms of volume and um, area also had non-decimal uh, systems i like most people could see the logic and advantage of a decimal system and this is something I always accepted until recently. It was only a short time ago that I asked myself, if decimalization is so logical and practical, why don't we use it for clocks? Why is it that clocks don't use base 10, but base 12 or 60? There are 24 hours in a day, not 10 or 20. Why are there 60 seconds in a minute? And 60 minutes in an hour, <clears throat> why not 100? Why are there 12 points on a clock face? I started to look into this and I discovered that the decimal system is neither logical nor practical. It's simple indeed, but nothing else. Let me be clear, I'm not one of these nostalgic reactionaries who would like to go back to the old imperial system that I grew up with. I remember as a child at primary school learning that, uh, that um, there were 16 ounces to a pound and 14 pounds to a stone, etc. Or there were 12 inches to a foot and three feet to a yard, and so on. But I do think that we've been duped into using a system that is not very good. It's clear where the decimal system comes from. After all, we have 10 fingers and thumbs, and so it's easy to count that way. But where does our system of measuring time come from? Well, in fact, our system of measuring time comes from the Babylonian civilization of more than 6,000 years ago. The most commonly accepted theory is this. Babylonia was an empire that had its origins in Mesopotamia, what is now southern Iraq, and spread over large areas of the Middle East. And they used a base 12 system. They later merged with the Sumerian culture, which used a base 5, using the fingers on one hand. And when the two groups traded together, they evolved a system that is based on 60, in other words, 5 times 12. The base is easy to use because, as I can demonstrate here, you can see that I'm counting the knuckles on my four fingers. Each finger has three knuckles. I'm using the thumb of the same hand to count the fingers. And when I've reached 12, I can put that multiple of 12 on the other hand and go back and repeat. This can be done five times which gives us 60. So what is the advantage of using a base 60 or 12 instead of a base 10 and 100? Well if you've ever tried to divide a bill for example in a restaurant of 100 pounds, euros, dollars, whatever between three people you can't do it because a third of 100 is this figure, 33.33 recurring. And OK, it's inconvenient. You can't do it. The thing is that a base 12 is a highly composite number, which means it can be divided by a lot of other numbers. If we take the number 10, you can see here that it cannot be divided by many other numbers. It can be divided basically by 5, and fifths and tenths, and that's it. At base 12 instead, you can see it has more options. You can divide it into half, quarters, thirds. 
if we look at the base 100, let's face it, all our currencies are multiples of 100, you can see the numbers it can be divided to here. Whereas 60, there are much, much more. So the fact that you can divide by more numbers, you can divide this basic unit by more numbers, does make life easier. And in fact, the old money that was used in, in Britain had 12 pennies to a shilling, but obviously with inflation, a shilling became worth much less, and it had 240 pennies to the pound. And again, 240 is an incredibly composite number and can be divided by many, many other numbers. This makes calculations easier and measurements easier. This is why when I'm doing odd jobs around the house, I still use the old fashioned tape measure very often with feet and inches because it's much more easy if I need to divide something, I can divide it up with, with totals that are marked on the tape measure. So maybe the question is wrong. We shouldn't ask why aren't there 100 minutes in an hour and so on, but why don't we have 120 pennies to the pound or 120 centimetres to the metre? It's a much more logical system. It's clear that the old imperial system was not very good, but it does seem to me we've been forced to exchange one bad system for another. The point is, things are the way they are because they are the way they are. Nothing's going to change. It would be much too difficult and expensive to change anything now. But it also seems to me that when governments or international organisations try to improve things, they often don't do a very good job of it. Anyway, that's it for now. Goodbye.